Hey everyone, it's me, Paul, with Reporting Live from my sofa. How's it going today? It is doing great here at the Sofa Squad. We are going to be following a new case. I don't know why I have to clap my hands to it, but it is Florida versus Rogers, the case of Dr. Teresa Cyber. This is a complicated case. There are many layers to it. It's actually kind of two cases in one. So there's going to be a lot to go over. It's supposed to last like five weeks. So we're going to do just like a general overview. Uh, like I always say, I'm not the end all be all. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know everything about this case. I just like to do these introduction videos so that we kind of get on the same page. There's obviously way more to this case than what I'm going to discuss in this video. So we can learn it as the case unravels or I invite you to do your own research online and engage in conversation here in the comment section. Also, we have a new channel, the podcast channel. I've moved the podcast that we do here. We also have an audio version of it uh, that's on, there's going to be links down downstairs in the comment section and the dis, in the uh, description. But uh, be sure and check it out because it's going to be its own channel and Alan Reese from Toxic Bliss and I host that and it's a lot of fun. We talk about these cases way more in depth and do other things there. Lastly, I'm going to have another channel. I actually already have it. I've put some stuff on there. It is completely out of the realm of true crime. I go over stuff on there like movie reviews or, you know, little rabbit holes that I go down like the LuLaRue pyramid uh, scheme thing. Uh, Jeffree Star... Kate, yeah, you name it. So there's just lots of other stuff because I have other, you know, interests than true crime. So if you're into that, the link's below. Be sure and check it out. Anyways, without further ado, let's review. So like I said, this is the Florida versus Rogers case. This is the case. Uh, the victim is Teresa Sivers. She was a doctor. She was very, very well respected in this, uh, a holistic type doctor. Uh, depending on who you talk to, you got a kind of a different story about her. Most people agree that she was, you know, a kind of dynamic type person, a head turner when she walked in a room, very put together, great doctor. Uh, friends said that the relationship between her and her husband left a lot to be desired, uh, very rocky at times. Uh, other people said that she was very demanding. She could get very snappy. She knew what she wanted. And if you weren't along with it, you know, watch out. So there is that. But all in all, she sounded like a, a pretty, you know, very well accomplished person. She graduated valedictorian in her high school. She graduated with honors from med school. And she had met her first husband and they moved to St. Pete. The marriage only lasted a few years. And even once she met the husband that's now on trial for killing her, potentially, allegedly, uh, her and her ex-husband kept in touch and they were very civil. So uh, again, she sounded like a, a decent human being that obviously did not deserve to die the way that she died. So let's get into the actual incident. Now, Teresa was bludgeoned to death in her Bonita Springs home. That's again in Florida. Uh, she, uh, that was on June 28th of 2015. Now, she had come home early from a family trip. Uh, the rest of her family, her two daughters and Mark Sievers, her husband who's going to be on trial, he and the daughter stayed back in Connecticut. So she got home. Apparently, she walked into some kind of an ambush and her body was found the next day. It appeared to have sustained a large number of bludgeoning wounds. And a couple of weeks later, the police received a tip that led to the arrest of Jimmy Ray Rogers and a longtime friend of Teresa's husband, Curtis Wright. And her actual husband was not arrested until February 26th of 2016. And that's where you get all these different people involved in this case and it becomes very whodunit. Now, prosecutors are saying that Mark planned his wife's murder and with the help of Curtis Wright, and allegedly that Curtis traveled back to Missouri and hired Jimmy Rogers as like the hitman. And he brought him back from Missouri to Southwest Florida to Bonita Springs. Now, the, basically the investigators think that Rogers is the one who actually killed Teresa, but they think that Mark and Wright, Mark and his friend Curtis, are the ones that essentially orchestrated the attack and made it all happen. Now, there's gonna be lots of evidence and from some of it that I gathered that's gonna be interesting because this case, in my opinion, it's going to completely rely on the evidence. Because because there's some of it that's like, well, how do you prove that he was there? It's it's very dicey. So to see how the state presents himself will be interesting. Now, there's going to be evidence that shows that Wright rented a car in Missouri like days before the murder, drove it down, and then like 
hours after the murder, the cars, and this is through GPS, the GPS was going back to the house of Missouri. So it's a little dicey. Rogers was seen on surveillance at, hold your breath, Walmart. Y'all, I'm not trying to make a joke out of it, but every one of these cases, the second they start talking about Walmart surveillance, I'm like, it's done, it's a wrap, just tie it up. Y'all do not ever go to Walmart when you're doing the shady stuff like that. I mean, it's bad enough to go get milk and eggs, not feel like you're being, you know, they're making you feel like you're ripping the place off. But if you're gonna certainly do some kind of crime, do not go to Walmart. Rogers was seen on surveillance at Walmart. He was buying weird stuff. 30 gallon trash bags, a log pick set, and flushable wet wipes. I don't know if those had something to do with the crime, but for God's sakes, he bought them on camera during the commission, allegedly, psh, psh, of a crime. Now, the state has to prove that Rogers was there, and allegedly they are doing this with, well, not allegedly, Curtis Wright, he has already been sentenced. He took a 25-year plea deal to testify against Rogers, and then allegedly Rogers' girlfriend will be testifying with some very damning evidence. And so if it's true, all the stuff that she says, I mean, her testimony could put him away. My whole thing is like with Wright, I'm like, you took, you got a 25-year deal. I don't really believe much of what he says, but if the girlfriend doesn't have anything to lose and she's just like, oh yeah, well, I happen to know this really shady stuff about my ex-boyfriend friend or whatever he is at this point then that holds a little bit more weight with me but i mean it's like a very photos doulos michelle traconis disposing of stuff type evidence so we'll have to see what that comes out during the trial on that now the motive is very tricky here because at first like we don't really know the motive but then when you go down the list you're like uh-huh motive uh-huh motive uh-huh motive so you know, again, she was a doctor. She was doing well. The friends say, look, this relationship was rocky at best. There is evidence of an open type swinger relationship. Mark is alleged to have had numerous affairs. She apparently had some kind of flirtatious type stuff between Wright and her on like text messaging, things of this nature. So you got a little bit of jealousy, possibly a little bit of infidelity on both parts. Uh, next, there is, and, and apparently also investigators say like their text message history and stuff shows like a very roller coaster type relationship. Now, there's also like a million dollar life insurance policy, so that alone, you're just like, okay, yep, done, motive. Now, there's also their children that it could be a custody battle over. So you see where there's just there's all these different things that could be going on to add up to this. Now, the trial has been in jury selection. I'm recording this on Sunday. Jury selection will continue on Monday. And what they're doing right now is Rogers is going to go first. And when that's over or they reach a plea deal, because apparently a plea deal has been offered to Rogers. And during this jury selection, whatever, he basically was like, nope, I was offered a deal only one time and I'm not taking it. And the judge is like, look, you know, your trial is like a death penalty life in prison trial. And he's like, yep. So apparently whatever the deal was, wasn't good enough. And he feels very confident about his case. So we'll see. But essentially, if they either resolve his case or it plays out, they're going to have Mark Seavers, Teresa's husband, waiting there at the courthouse every day to just go ahead and start his. So that's why it's going to take several weeks. So anything could happen in this trial, which is another reason why I'm very interested to see how it plays out. So that's about it. And like I said, I'm not the end all be all. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know this case inside and out right now, but this is just some overview type information to get everybody kind of going on the same page. If it interests you and you sound like, hey, I want to follow the squad on this one, by all means, do some more research on your own. We have a chat room already going on our Discord channel, link in the description. And there's that. So again, check out the podcast channel, check out my pop culture channel. You'll see them down there. Uh, I hope you enjoy all of that. I hope you'll follow us for this trial. And thank you for being a friend and hanging out with me. I will see all of you soon.